Hi, I'm Walt Wager, and today I'm really talking to beginners. Uh, we're going to take a project from the AAW uh, book calling Turning Holiday Ornaments. Uh, this project was designed by Nick Cook. It's a little uh, snowman ornament. But what I'm going to stress during the video is uh, some of the cuts and how to use the tools in order to make this snowman ornament. So I'm going to go through it step by step, probably a little bit more detailed than someone that's already familiar with turning needs to know. But as I talk my way through it, I'm going to uh, stress the use of the different tools, uh, at least how I would do it. Start with uh, a piece of wood that's, this is a piece of a 2 by 4 cut to be square. So it's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. This is a little larger than we need, but uh, you don't need to use great wood in order to practice some of your skills. The first thing we're going to do is to set the spur drive that came with my lathe here into this piece of wood. And in order to get it to center, I'm just going to roughly draw a line from corner to corner on this wood so I know about where the center is. Let me get a little close-up of that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. These don't have to be exact because we're going to turn it to be round, but I'm going from corner to corner, and that gives me an approximate center. So first thing I'm going to do is set my spur drive into the piece of wood I'm going to turn by putting it on center. And I'm hitting it with a, another piece of wood. I could use a dead blow hammer or a mallet but I wouldn't use a steel hammer because a steel hammer would mushroom off over the end of the steel and it would mar up my worst taper in my lathe. Bring the tailstock up to the other side, secure the tailstock, and then turn the quill into the back of the piece that I'm securing. So that piece is secured in the lathe right now. There's no way it can come out nice and tight. I can bring my tool rest up to about center, and I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge to make this round. The spindle roughing gouge looks like this. It's made from flat stock and, and formed and the end of the spindle roughing gouge is square and sharp. So this is the bevel of the spindle roughing gouge. This is the flute of the spindle roughing gouge in here. And these are the outside wings. When I turn this on, I'm going to put the tool firmly on the tool rest. This is an anchor. We're going to use the ABC method. This is the A part, anchor the tool on the tool rest. You don't want to start it up here and put it in the wood because it'll, it'll put it on the tool rest for you. But start it on the tool rest. Second, I'm going to leave the handle way down so that I'm rubbing the bevel on the wood. In other words, the, 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 uh, the, the cutting edge is not hitting the wood, just the bevel. It won't cut until I lift the handle up a bit and then the cutting edge will get into the wood and start cutting the wood. I'm setting my lathe speed at about 3,000 for this spindle project. So it seems to be moving quite fast. Anchor, double, cut. I can't do it all at once on this, with this uh, tool rest. I'm just going to move it. So I'm just going to take off part of it. I don't really know when it's round, but I put the tool on there and it doesn't bounce. It's round. It's still bouncing, so a little more to do. Okay, we 
this little flat spot there, but we'll be taking that out later. Same thing, I'm setting my tool rest, putting the gouge, anchoring the gouge on the tool rest, rubbing the bevel, picking it up until I get it back, and then coming across the bevel. Same thing with Okay, next we're going to shape, start shaping the hat of our snowman up on the tailstock end of the lathe. And what I'm going to have to do is make, I want, I want to shape the hat, but I, I need some room uh, in order to cut in to get the room I need on the hat. I, I'm going to leave this whole thing between centers, so I don't want to go down into that, I don't want to be cutting into the live center. So. I'm going to first make a cut in from the end to define the top of the hat. The top of the hat will be right about here. I'll make a mark. And I'm going to cut down to that mark in order to give myself some room to work. So I've got my face shield on and I'm going to try to come in a little bit so you can see this. With my spindle gouge, I'm going to use the anchor, bevel, cover coat, putting the bevel on the wood, raising the handle, picking up my cut, and coming in. Bevel on the wood, pick up the handle, and that's that's all I'm going to take off for now. I'm going to move the camera around a little bit so you can see what that looks like. Okay, now I'm going to start cutting the hat. I need to know how far down I want the hat. So let's give them a, a nice top hat. We'll have, we'll cut down to there for the hat. We'll have the brim of the hat somewhere around there. So I'm going to start cutting. And what I want to do is put the bevel on the wood and, and, and cut down to the brim. Bevel on the wood. I've got the flute at approximately 11 o'clock. And that's going to be the top of the hat right here for the snowman. Then I'm going to trim up the rim and I'm going to come in from this direction with the 3 8 spindle gouge. I'm going to come in from this direction leaving the bevel of the tool, the bevel of the tool right here, perpendicular to the lathe. I know it's hard to see, but let's see if I can get you a better shot. I want the, the, the flute of the tool is going to be right at 3 o'clock. That's 12 o'clock, that's 3 o'clock, and the bevel is going to come straight in. I'm going to clean it up by just coming back out here, laying the bevel on the wood, and coming down to the corner. So I have a nice, clean, flat bevel there on, on that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, defining the rim, but coming in from the other direction with the bevel facing this way. I need a little room to work, so I'm going to start shaping the face 
by coming down like this and forming a bead. So the, the head of the snowman is actually a bead that goes from about here, we want it, we want it to meet approximately at the corners of the hat. Back and forth on the, between the uh, rim of the hat and the top of the, the bottom of that bead. And then I'm going to the, the other side of the snowman at the plate, laying the, laying the bevel on the wood and bringing it around to complete that bead. I'm going to give him some shoulders. The head doesn't have to be quite that big. He's rocking back and forth. Trying to be... And forming his head. So now we have our hat and we have the head formed. I'm going to clean up the edge of this um, rim a little bit of the hat just by coming across with my spindle gouge like that. So now we need to taper the body. We have a tapered body. We have the hat, we have the head, and we have a tapered body that comes down to a little ball at the end. And the tool that Nick Cook recommends is the uh, spindle roughing gouge. It can be used to taper the body just the same way you're using it to round. Just put the, put the bevel on the wood, bring up the handle, and move it down across the the piece. One reason you need some room on the end here is this is a big tool. You don't want to run it into the using the anchor, bevel, cut approach on this wood. part of this is the little ball here at the end of our snowman. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And I'm going to make a mark. Basically, this is going to be the center of the ball, the inside edge and the outside. So I rest the spindle gouge on the center line here, and then bring it down and swing it the other way. I can make them a bead on the bottom here very easily. And 
I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch on the bottom. Uh, then they'll take it off later. Now I can decide aesthetically if that's what I want before I cut it off or do anything else. Um, it looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to sand it. I have some uh, 120 grit. You don't need a great big piece of sandpaper for a project like this, so cut it off. I have uh, 220 grit. And a piece of uh, 320 grit that's already cut sandpaper. And when I sand, I'm going to slow the speed of the lathe way down. For a couple reasons. One, I don't I don't want to heat the wood when I'm sanding. I don't want to burn my fingers either. So if I slow the lathe down, the sandpaper doesn't clog as bad as if it was going fast. And, and it doesn't get as hot as if I'm going fast. It might take a few seconds longer to sand, but not enough to make a difference. Now this wood, this is pine, and it it was looking pretty rough, but that that uh, 120 sandpaper is taking it down pretty fast. And the hat, the brim, underneath the brim. Of course, I can't sit in the top of the hat right now because it's still attached, and I can't sit in the bottom of that ball right now because it's still attached. So we'll get those later. So that's the um, 120. Get the 220 on here. And then we'll, we'll go to 320, and that will be good enough for this project. Now in the article, Nick, Nick Cook recommends using a piece of masonite to define the band on the hat. Because if you put something against this when it's turning real fast, it'll burn into the wood. I don't have a piece of masonite handy, but we'll try something else. What I have is a piece of, a corner of a piece of maple that I cut off from a platter. And if I put that on there, and spin this real fast. It's going to burnish that band into the hat. And it's going to get hot. It's going to start burning along. Now, if you don't want to do it that way, you can always take a marking pen like a Sharpie. Turn the speed down. You don't need the speed so high. And just take the Sharpie and mark the band on the hat like that. And while you're at it, you can determine where the face of your piece is going to be and put in the eyes the nose and the mouth of your snowman. And we'll put a couple, give them a couple buttons down front. Be as inventive and colorful as you, as you want to be. Now, we have to remove this from the 
lay, and we're going to cut off the top part first, and I'm going to go back to the spindle gouge, turn up the speed, put the bevel on the wood back here, and cut back down to the top of the hat. And I have a couple of options now. I've got it down to about an eighth of an inch. I could take it off and cut it off with a small saw, or I can um, use a small parting tool. I have a small little parting tool that's ground down to be pretty fine. Turn the speed down a little bit and use that parting tool to take it right off. I have to kind of hold the piece as I do this. Now, before I get that too far down, I also want to take the parting tool and make this part down here smaller so I can, I can cut it off without any problem. And I'll go ahead and cut this right off. We have our little snowman ornament. During this snowman ornament, the skills you used were securing the uh, spindle stock between centers, uh, using the roughing, the spindle roughing gouge in order to round it out, using the uh, 3 eighths inch, using the 3 eighths inch spindle gouge for the details and cutting the the hat, the rim, and the bead that became the head. And then using the spindle roughing gouge again for the tapering and the 3 8 inch spindle gouge for the bead at the bottom. Now there's a little break off at the bottom so you just take some of your sandpaper Clean that bottom up a little bit. And the top is pretty well done. Sand it off a little bit. And we're ready to put an eye hook in the top and spray paint it with lacquer. So I have a teeny tiny drill. Put a little hole in the top. Take my eye hook. drop of uh, super glue around the eye hook. Okay, on my ornaments I like to take a piece of uh, monofilament line, put it through the eye hook, Tie a little knot and cut it off. So there's a way to hang the snowman on the tree. And also it serves as a holder for when I spray the ornament with lacquer. So there's a good first project that has a lot of different skills and uh, spindle turning skills and I recommend you read the article by Nick Cook in the AAW 
Turning Holiday Ornaments book, and it's got a lot of other um, ornaments in it that, that you can make also. Well, happy turning, and if you like this video, subscribe to my uh, YouTube site, uh, or go to my website, waltwager.com, where there are other videos that you can watch. Thank you.